television is the greatest and most all-pervasive hypnotist and propaganda tool ever conceived. TV teaches people what to think, but not how to think. And TV has given modern humans an utterly false perception of society, of the world, and of each other. Through TV, the power elite have succeeded in creating a distracted, misinformed, divided and class-driven society suffering historical amnesia and completely oblivious to the true realities of their surroundings. And all of these people view themselves as truly informed and are very quick to berate and ridicule anyone who offers them an alternate perspective. Subsequently, through the ideas put into their heads by TV and through a TV-driven obsession with the collecting of meaningless trinkets, fashions and possessions that the TV tells them defines who they are as people, the power elite have also managed to rob most of the common man of their wealth, their lands, their skills, their education and their history. But most importantly, it has robbed people of their ability to think critically and objectively. And that is exactly what television was designed to do and exactly why it was invented. Today what we have is we develop things, so we say to you, here's a device you put in your kitchen and then you can talk to it to tell you, ask what the weather is, what's on TV tonight, um, all of that, that, I could easily reverse that and listen to everything you say in your house. There are so many weaknesses in your home. Your security cameras are access points, your remote control on your TV, your Samsung television, your refrigerator that tells you how much uh, milk is in it. My thing is I really don't need my refrigerator to talk to my toaster. They've gotten along for a long time without ever having a <laughs> conversation. But what happens is we develop something, we get real excited about, we gotta get this to the marketplace. And sure enough, we never look at the negative side. All I try to say to a technology company, yeah, this is great. Now, can you take a little time to just say, how would someone use this technology in a negative, self-serving way so that we build the block to that before we ever give it to the public to use it? Uh, we'd, we'd save a lot of problems. The big game changer is that 5G will use much higher frequency bands than previously thought viable for mobile broadband and other applications. Such millimeter wave signals have physical properties that are both a limitation and a strength. They tend to travel best in narrow and straight lines, and they do not go through physical objects as well. But brilliant engineers have developed new antennas that can aim and amplify signals. Now to make this work, five, the 5G build out is going to be very infrastructure intensive, requiring massive deployment of small cells. I'm confident that the actions will lead to a cornucopia of unanticipated innovative uses. It will generate tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important because it means that U.S. companies will be the first out of the gate. And that is why 5G is a national priority. And stay out of the way of technological development. Unlike some countries, we do not believe that we should spend the next couple of years studying what 5G should be or how it should operate. What happens is we develop something, we get real excited about, we gotta get this to the marketplace. And sure enough, we never look at the negative side. Unlike some countries, we do not believe that we should spend the next couple of years studying what 5G should be or how it should operate. The future has a way of inventing itself. Turning innovators loose is far preferable to expecting committees and regulators to define the future. Television set is also specifically designed to emit alpha waves. These can be clearly seen as a series of horizontal lines that run across the screen from top to bottom at regular intervals when using a camera to film an operating TV set, but they cannot be detected by the naked eye. These regular lines are not simply a normal part of the functioning of your picture tube. They are there for a particular reason, and they travel across the screen at a predetermined and very specific pace. How often have you seen someone sit at a TV and say, I don't like this program, and yet they sit there and watch it anyway? How often have you done it yourself? 
It is because these horizontal lines are there to generate these hypnotic alpha waves. Alpha waves place you into a trance-like state as you are told what to think by scripted newsreaders. They're told what to buy, what to wear, where to go, and always kept otherwise distracted by sport, meaningless celebrity gossip, and a barrage of sex and entertainment. Nowadays, ever more frequently punctuated by messages of fear and warnings of imminent terror. These alpha waves produced by your TV set affect your electrical field even if you are not watching it. The TV merely has to be on. They become addictive as your body becomes used to the energy field and many people would simply feel unable to cope without the daily fix of their favourite TV show. Then this hypnotic state carries on throughout the day as people work robot-like at their given tasks, usually discussing whatever the television taught them with their co-workers. Often people think they are discussing their own thoughts, but when the conversation is really analysed, it's usually not. It's about what show they watched last night, or sport, or something they learned from the Discovery Channel, their feelings towards the opposite sex, or perhaps something like the war on terror. And whether they realise it or not, what they are talking about, and 98% of what they think they know about anything at all, has been taught to them by the television, or by print media that is wholly owned and controlled by the very same six people who own all the TV stations. That's right, six people. Sixty years ago, the media in the Western world was run by 86 small corporations who all competed to deliver the best and most informative news. Today, it is run as a well-oiled, very streamlined and tightly controlled machine by just six who now control all major Western mainstream television and print media. And with the current rate of corporate growth, that number is set to soon drop to three. This has set an extremely dangerous precedent, as it means that all televised and mainstream print media is now controlled by very, very few people. For a better and more informed perspective, obtain your news online from one of the many emerging independent websites, and go to many sites from different countries and sources to compare the same story from a variety of perspectives. You have been told that the internet is an unreliable source of information, and it is true that there are many bogus websites. But there is also a lot of very reliable information from very reliable sources. You know, a lot of people have speculated that these cell phone towers, these Gwen towers, these ELF towers, these towers that are absolutely everywhere. And I mean everywhere. They're disguised as trees. They're strapped on the smokestacks. They're all over every single solitary church. And again, they are everywhere. If these are cell phone towers, then why are there so many in a row? Why is it that if you triangulate yourself between cell phone towers, your cell phone doesn't, your service doesn't improve? Because these aren't exactly what people think they are whatsoever at all. Now, let me ask you, if we have all these satellites, I mean, what's the current count? 25, 27,000, according to NASA, according to the powers that be, we have satellites absolutely everywhere. Why is it that none of these dishes, none of these transceivers are pointing up. They're all pointing out. All of them. Everywhere. That's a fact. Why is it that everyone had to switch from their antenna televisions to the cable boxes, and then why was there a forced swap over to digital? You see what I'm saying? It's because these are weapons. And now, to take it even one step further, everyone's using a laptop, cell phone, or some, some something like that that runs on what? Electricity. It's digital. They're filling the atmosphere, and they're conjuring these things, and they're using the symbols necessary to do such a thing. <sighs> I'm having a hard time here. I can't really explain what it is I'm trying to say. A specific set of circumstances put all of this into my lap, one by one by one by one. And I'm trying to explain to you, but I can't really find the words to, to. They have literally surrounded us with a super highway for demons to travel through. How's that? How's that? Instead of being inside a protective Faraday cage, we're inside the anti-Faraday anti cage, and they're using things like CERN, and they're using the symbolism every place that basically shows us that they are indeed conjuring.
Western society has accepted as unquestionable a technological imperative that is quite as arbitrary as the most primitive taboo. Not merely the duty to foster invention and constantly to create technological novelties, but equally the duty to surrender to these novelties unconditionally just because they are offered without respect to their human consequences. This is a patent right here for nervous system manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors. Now, what does that mean? It means just what it sounds like. Here's a few diagrams from the patent. Do you see this? Does it make any sense now why they need everyone to have the highest resolution possible flat screen in their home? Why is it that that's all a rage? Why is it that they have gone through great pains in keeping people sitting in front of their televisions, laptops, computers, and cell phones? Because every single solitary one of those devices, first of all, is a scrying mirror. Now, what is a scrying mirror? If you follow my channel, you probably have a really good idea. It's quite similar and along the lines of a crystal ball, except it's a black mirror that's used to conjure otherworldly entities from other dimensions, things that you're not supposed to communicate with. And yet, that's exactly what we're doing every single time we turn on one of our devices. Does it look familiar? Dream time. Does it look familiar? Do you see any resemblance? Because it's exactly what they are. And now this patent, patent number 6506148B2. Actually, it's J2, 6506148B2. The abstract of this is, psychological effects have been observed in a human subject in response to stimulation of the skin with weak electromagnetic fields that are pulsed with certain frequencies near a half a hertz or 2.4 hertz, such as to excite a sensory resonance. Many computer monitors and TV tubes, when displayed pulse images, emit pulsed electro electromagnetic fields of sufficient amplitudes to cause such excitation. It is therefore possible to manipulate the nervous system of a subject by pulsing images displayed on a nearby computer monitor or TV set. For the latter, the image, may pul the image pulsing may be embedded in the program material or it may be overlaid by modulating a video stream, either as an RF signal or as a video signal. I do believe that cyber, it, up until this point in time, has been used for financial crimes or gathering data and information, which is of value. What's going to happen is we're going to see cyber very quickly now turn very black. What's going to happen is we're going to see cyber very quickly now turn very black. So he, what he was saying is basically, yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't give a shit about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that were summoning, in, and these things that were summoning. What's going to happen is we're going to see cyber very quickly now turn very black. So we have the ability, as you know, uh, to basically shut someone's pacemaker off, but we have to be within 35 feet of them. We test these devices at Quantico all the time. So as long as I walk up within 35 feet of you, I take control of any bodily device you have on you. So if I want to assassinate you, I want to speed it up, take it down, I can do that. 